Carson from Guys With Games, and today I'm going to show you a game that I usually play with beginner learners, usually younger children. But it could be used at any level. What I do is first I'll come in and write this on the board, and then divide the class into groups of three. And it must be three because in this game there are three jobs. So once you have your groups separated into teams of three, I'll give each team a piece of blank paper and I'll say copy down these things as if this whiteboard is your piece of paper. So they'll turn it and then one person on the team will write exactly what's on the board like it is on their piece of paper. Okay, once they have copied everything down on their piece of paper, I'm going to assign each person on that team a, a position. So let's call this A and B and C. Sally, you are A. Simon, you are B. And Cherry, you are C. So A's job is to listen to the word that the teacher says. So for example, potato. And you need to write potato. Essentially spell potato. So. Well, let's say he does it wrong, okay? He makes a mistake, but he needs to stand up, come to the teacher, show me what he has written before B can start on their job. So he shows me, I'm sorry, that's not right. Take it back to your table, talk to your teammates, and find the answer. If you need to, you can look in a book and find out how you actually spell potato. Let's say later, he returns to me and now he's fixed it. I say, good job, now go and give this to the next person, the B person. So B now needs to use this word in a sentence. They will make a simple sentence like, the potato is big. That's fine, as long as it's a sentence that makes sense, and it's in the proper word order, and there's a period, and there's a capital letter, perfect. Okay, so you've done this, now go back and give your paper to this person who's doing C job. At each step, they need to come and show the teacher, and get an approval to give it to the next person. So it's a relay of sorts, you'll have kids coming up from each team showing you, this is how I spelled potato. Good job, take it back to your team and give it to B. Finally, someone will just, wow, this. Okay, this is where I, the teacher, try to make things become even. So I maybe will notice that at first, okay, whoever does it first, fine. You get one point for your team and I'll keep score on the board. Let's say there are seven teams of three kids then whoever does the first one first, fine, they get one point. But later, maybe this team was team two, and team two has been doing this really very well every time. I might send team two back and say, this is not a good drawing of a potato, to give the other teams a chance. You don't want ever in any classroom game situation for one team to just run away with it because it will give the other students less an incentive to even try. So here is where I use my agency as a teacher to kind of make things be more fair and more even. But it's simple. You could replace sentence with, um, I don't know, maybe an English definition. Or if you have a native teacher, you could write, you could have B student write in their native language, potato, malangsu. So in Chinese. Uh, anyway, that only works if you have a native teacher assisting you at the same time and he or she needs to be on board with what they need to do which is basically to check that the students have done it correctly so you play a number of times if you don't make these little quadrants what will happen is they'll use the whole paper to draw a potato and you don't want to waste that much paper it's just uh, much more organized if you set it up this way from the beginning but essentially it's a relay race bam 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 they get all three done and then it's very important that you change the jobs after first round. So if we have you are student A, you are student B, you are student C on your team in the first try, then let's change, okay? This time you are C, 
you are A and you are B. So that they all, so that you don't have one kid always spelling, one kid is always writing the sentence, and one kid is always drawing the picture. Switch it up so that they have different jobs to do. And that's it. This is how I'm going to explain it to the kids. I'm just going to write this on the board, one of these. As an example, um, I'm going to start with pizza. I'm going to end with green. And this time, it's an association game. I'm going to divide the class. Six teams, so three, two to three kids to a team. They can just shout out the answer, okay? So I'll just say, when you think of pizza, what do you think of that starts with C? Crust. Good. Cheese. No, cheese. Okay, cheese. And so they can go up or down. When you think of green, what do you think of that starts with I? Or you can go down. Mouse. Cheese mouse. No. Cheese. Mozzarella. No. Cheese. So this is good. So you can make it more difficult or easier. Ireland, Ireland, Green Ireland. Ireland. Uh, country. Country. So every time somebody's yelling one of these out, let's say team two said cheese, I give them a point. Team four said Ireland, I give them a point. Team six said country, I give them a point. Uh, flag. Flag, no. What do you need to make cheese? Milk. 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 <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> this is a tricky one. Oh, Farm. Oh, yeah, okay, farm so country can have two different yeah, definitions, yeah, yeah. Right? right? Let's just do one more. Okay, so I have love and I have feces. Uh, bathroom. Bathroom, no. Um, uh, kiss. Kiss. So team one gets another point. Mouth. If you only got five minutes, you can just prepare a few of these and have the kids guess it and play it like this. So if you have a lot of time or an advanced class, what I do is I give each group a piece of paper and I let them make their own and it really works well.